In this video, I want to show you how to get from a very simple object like this into something a little bit more interesting like this without doing any work, or at least not doing very much work. All that we have here is a simple object with some textures which have been displaced onto the object. And this is fully 3D printable and it will look like that when you do. First thing you need are the textures that you want to use. And these are just two textures, a cobblestone texture and a larger stone texture that I got from Polyhaven. So here we are at polyhaven.com and it's a great site. You can get HDRIs and models, but here I want some textures. So basically you find a texture you want you like the look of let's pick that one for the moment you click on it now you sometimes get different options here for uh, different resolutions that you can save it at I find 2k is fine to be honest um, and you download it and save it somewhere I will save it into my downloads folder at the moment because I already have this one When you've downloaded your textures, you'll get a zip file, which you can extract to any directory you want. Here I've extracted it to a folder called Cobblestone. And in there, you'll see there's a, a blend file for some reason, I don't know. And then there's your textures. There's more than one. There's four of them here. Um, they're all different. But the one you really want is the disp, the displacement map. So that's the texture. That you'll be using. Okay, well our textures downloaded, we can add them into Blender so that we can use them on our model. If we go down to the texture properties tab, you can click new and then you can open the downloaded texture. Now I saved them I can't remember where I saved them. Here we have the cobblestone texture that I downloaded. And I load up the displacement one. Good idea to rename it at this point. And that's that. Okay, now we have this texture. Let's add it to this object as a displacement. We have the object selected in object mode. We have to give it some geometry because there really isn't much geometry here. So we'll just add a subdivision surface modifier. With something with so little geometry, I found that maybe five or six is fine. We'll try with five. And then we have it looks a bit better already now but in order to add that texture to this model we can add a displacement modifier now it doesn't look very good immediately but if we look here we have this little checker box thing that's your textures if you open it there's your cobbles and it doesn't look very good at all but that's because the strength is too much so if we bring the strength down oops Bit too far maybe there we go we have some cobbles that looks very nice except it's underneath and it's everywhere so really we want to limit the cobbles the texture to just this path now in order to do that we're going to have to take advantage of the vertex groups now, a vertex group, if you don't already know, is just a group of points or vertices in your model that you give a name to, and you can select them or deselect them and use them in other things um, as a group of vertices that the modifier will affect. So we need to go back into edit mode. Before I do, I'll turn this off. This stops the subdivision surface modifier being available in the edit mode. 
because it's just easier to see it. So we're in edit mode now. Now we need to select the vertices that will be the path. Should be those. And those. I happen to know that don't want that one, that one, that one, or that one. Okay, so we've now selected the path. We go into vertex groups, which is this little green triangle here. We need to add these as a group. So under vertex groups, press plus, and a group is created, though I don't really like the name, so we can change that to path in this case. And this is the bit that's easy to forget. You have to click assign, otherwise nothing will happen. You'll have the path vertex group, but it'll have nothing in it. Now you can see that if we unselect everything, we can reselect it again by clicking select. That's what vertex groups are good for. Anyway, if we go back to our in object mode, and we go back to our displacement modifier. Here, if we select path, it's only the path that is selected. Uh, before I continue, I should remember to make sure this direction is set to Z. I'm not entirely sure why, if I'm honest, but it does make things a lot better. Okay, now we want to apply a different texture to this part or the border of the path. In order to do that, we need to select the correct vertices again. So we'll do that in the same way as we did it before. We go into edit mode, then we select the vertices that we want, which I will do this way, which works sometimes. Turn X-ray on, select the ones I want, approximately, turn X-ray off, and have a look what we've got. I right, missed these two out, so I'll just put those back in. Okay, that looks okay. So, vertex groups plus change the name to border. And not forgetting to assign. Okay, so now we have our second vertex group. So, heading back to our modifiers, we now add a second displacement modifier. And let's change the direction to Z now, because I keep forgetting to do that. Now, we need a new texture for this displacement, so we click on New. Doesn't look very nice, but it'll do for now. And we change the name here. I'm going to change it to border. And this funny little icon here, if you click on it, it will show the texture in the texture tab. I know it looks like the old one, but it isn't. We will now click this button and find our second texture which for me is this one. Remember to use the displacement one. Open image. Back to displacements. Select our border vertex group. Now we can play with the size. I sometimes find that this mid-level button is quite handy to tidy things up a bit. But that looks about right. I'll bring it down a little bit, maybe. Okay. So that looks okay. But there's still a few things we can do to improve this. Say, for example, I wanted to change the size or the layout of these cobbles. I can click on the displacement for the cobbles, click on this funny icon again, and it takes me to a preview of the cobbled texture. If you scroll down, 
under crop minimum x and minimum y you can now make them you can stretch them out or you can make them smaller by fiddling about with this maybe a little bit smaller yeah that's not so bad so let's try and make some adjustments to this one too this the border as well click on the modifier properties click on the other displacement click on this funny little icon over here and go down to crop and you can fiddle about with this too which can be quite nice till you get what you like and I think for me that will do there you have it now I have found that adding another subdivision surface after this can make it a lot tidier and a lot nicer but basically if you apply all these you'll find that you do actually have that geometry so it will print so there you go I hope that made sense and I hope it was clear enough and I hope it was understandable if there are any problems any questions put them in the comments and I will attempt to answer them so thank you very much goodbye